Okay. Hi, I'm Sandy. I'm going to share with you how to purchase bird-worthy binoculars and avoid the mistakes most people make when purchasing their binoculars. A great pair of binoculars are going to enhance your birding experience, whereas a poor pair will leave you frustrated with missed opportunities, give you headaches and uh, eye strain. You want to avoid your grandfather's binoculars, you want to avoid zoom binoculars, and also image stabilizations. They tend to be too heavy. Boulders and hunters have different requirements. You want to consider the birds when you're purchasing your binoculars. Birds are unique. They, are, they can be very small to very large. They fly and you need to be able to follow them. You're outside and dealing with uh, lighting conditions and so you want your binoculars to en enhance and deal with those situations. So the very first thing you want to consider is your budget. You want to purchase the very best binoculars that your budget can afford. They'll give you years of birding bliss. You can purchase binoculars for under $100. You'll get a good image with that and you can get a wide field of view. However, they won't be waterproofed, neither will they be fogproofed. Binoculars over $200 would come nitrogen purged, which is your fog proofing and water uh, proof. And if you're spending over $200, I wouldn't want to have binoculars without those two features. The worst thing that can happen is you're walking around the edge of a pond observing ducks run across a slippy surface and next thing you know, you've lost your binoculars. So. When you're looking at the binoculars, you're going to see numbers written on them. The first number you will see, let's say for an example, a 7, an X, and let's say the number 35. That's telling you that those binoculars, when you're looking at your bird, the bird will be seven times larger looking through the binoculars than without them. That's the first number. That's your magnification or your power. The second number is the millimeters, the diameter of your large objective. So if we Look at the Audubon suggestions. They say for birders, you want a magnification of six, seven, or eight. Some birders, if they can hold their arms steady, can use a 10 magnification. But if you cannot hold your arm steady, you're going to have your uh, wobble, your shakiness, magnified six, seven, eight, or 10 times. So make sure that you can stabilize your binoculars and you're physically fit enough to take the heavier binoculars. If not, you want to purchase the smaller binoculars where you are stable. That's number one with, with your binoculars. Okay, the second number in your binoculars, if it's 40 to 45 diameter, that's telling you that these binoculars are full-size binoculars. They're going to help you in poor light situations. A mid-size binocular would be 30 to 35 in the diameter across here. If you have two identical pairs of binoculars, one at a 7 by 35, the other at a 7 by 42, the one with the 42 millimeter across here is going to give you the clearer, crisper viewing with the poor lighters, lighting situations. Okay, um, the next thing that we want to consider is the barrels. My eyes are set a certain distance apart and the next person's may be different. Manufacturers want to appeal to as, appeal to as many uh, clients as possible, so they make their binoculars be able to rotate. Now, you don't want this to be slipping into these different positions. You want it to be a bit of a, a you know, a, a pull to get it out there. But you want to look through your binoculars and pull them close together, making the objectives closer together until you see one perfect circle within your field of view. So you'll go from, say, a two down to an intersected and then you'll get a nice clear crisp. That's the kind of view that you need to see when you're out there birding. Also, if you're wearing glasses, you want to have them retracted. Uh, don't be having them up here in this position trying to ob observe them. The third issue with purchasing binoculars is the color. On the objectives, large objectives, you want to see a color coating of bluish to a purplish uh, tinge on there. You want to make sure that it's not blotched and it's not scratched. And what that coloring is telling you is that it's been 
coated to reduce the internal glare and it's going to increase the light into your eyes. So when you're in those poor lighting situations, it's got the, your binoculars are going to help you see and identify that bird at the distance. The fourth feature is you want to focus your binoculars and see how close you can view them. These will focus at a distance of 7 feet, uh, 20 feet. Outside of that range, I wouldn't want to have them. You, you want to have something that would be 20 feet or closer and then obviously beyond that when you push it out to the infinity. Your final test you want to take outdoors. If where you are will not let you take your binoculars, your two or three binoculars that you've narrowed it down to at this point in time, outside to test it in natural lighting, I wouldn't buy from that uh, distributor. When I go outside, I'm looking for a large sign with large lettering. When I'm looking through, after I've come in focus, I want to make sure that every letter in this sign is clear, clean, crisp all the way across. The end letters, I do not want them having any curve or any distortion or any fisheye look. The next final test that I'm going to do with the binoculars is look through at a license tag about two blocks away or a yard sign or a road sign and the same I want to make sure all those small letters are clear, clean and crisp. Remember if I'm looking for a bird and I can't see his bill that can determine whether or not I can ID what that particular bird is or not. If I can't see the bill, if I can't see the color or the shape of it then that's going to limit my birding abilities. I want to thank you for taking the time with me here. If you want to take a pencil and a piece of paper, I'll give you some bird-worthy configurations. That would be a 6 by 32, a 7 by 35, a 7 by 42. By the way, Roger Torrey Peterson and David Sibley both used a 7 by 42 binoculars when they did their latest bird uh, field guides. 8 by 40, 8 by 42, and 8.5 by 44. The next thing that you want to make sure is that in the specifications your field of view is at least 6.5 degrees. That would be 341 feet at a thousand yards. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. Purchase yourself a nice harness with some wide straps to reduce the weight. Enjoy your binoculars. You've got years of wonderful birding experiences and there are wonderful people out there in the field. Leave me some comments. Give me some ideas of what you'd like to hear next, and uh, thank you again. Happy birding.